what's going on right now is that we're going to soon hit a point in time where the Antichrist is going to persecute believers. We're heading toward there and that they can keep track of every believer, whether they try to hide or defend themselves. It will be defunded. It will be disarmed. And whether you even try to run without a weapon, they will track you down and find you. We're going to, and the Antichrist will eventually do that at the tribulation. And we're seeing things being set up right now for that. Right now, things are setting up right now for that. You might say, how, why, and you're kind of scaring me, preacher. Tell me. So uh, let's go through several things on what's going on around our world, shall we? So the first thing that we're going to cover around our world is obviously we've heard about the infamous BLM movement. The infamous BLM movement, what they're doing is that they're trying to, uh, because of this spread about Black Lives Matter, they keep screaming out. And then in Seattle, it got so bad that the anarchy that is going on over there the people, the anarchists, think that we finally attained our freedom. We finally attained our freedom. We finally get a zone over here where the police brutality is gone. The dictatorship is gone. And it's all underneath our hand and our power. Now, because of what's going on with uh, George Floyd's death, they're using that as an advantage moment where they can defund the police. And then without the police power, without order and law, then what happens? Then it goes to the whims of these anarchists going on. And it's sad that you got literally thousands of population submitted to these hundreds of people, this minuscule people who, who just take over the whole thing. And what's even more scary is that if you lose this state power, and you got to realize this, the United States history, how it was built, the, they deliberately did it in a way where federal government power would not have too much power, so then they have divided through states. Through Lincoln, it was pretty much lost, and then it was getting more and more through uh, FDR and the other people, where it's becoming more through a socialist type of program where it's giving more and more federal power. Now, think about this, is that if you get these rabble-rousers, which consist mostly of liberals, so to speak, if they're given the power, saying, hey, you have full freedom to do whatever you want, then what do you think is going to happen? If uh, you told a liberal, hey, you know, there's a person who's preaching the gospel over there. I just want to tell you this. The police are not going to intervene. If you had liberty to do what you want, you go ahead and do it. What do you think they're going to do? Choke yeah, they're going to choke them. They're going to spit on them. They're going to beat them up. You're going to say, oh, no, they wouldn't. Well, yeah, probably there might be a good number who wouldn't. But, hey, you know, I mean... Are you confident to say that in, in a university campus if a person is preaching the gospel, talking about the judgment of sin, hellfire, salvation by grace through faith, Jesus is the only way? And if uh, you think that it's totally safe not to have any officer involved, especially you haven't been to those kind of uh, street preaching meetings. If you've ever been to street preaching uh, events, where you are given full freedom to preach the gospel and these crowds have full freedom to do whatever they want to you, they throw stuff at you. Oh, yeah. They spit at you. And that's the courteous, lightest way that they'll do to you. They'll treat you. And if they had their full way, if they're so angry at you, they feel like they have the right to beat you up and treat you with violence. So think about that. If we give them this power, then what's going to happen? Well, these guys can't intervene. So they're given full freedom. If they're given full freedom, who's the group that's supporting this bunch, huh? Who's the bunch? What's going on over here is that they're going to the government. They're trying to hit federal, federal, federal. Support us over here. And listen, man, isn't it scary when something federal gives the power to these anarchists over here? Then what do you think is going to happen to us? Nothing safe. Nothing safe over here. You can't depend on these guys to take care of the issue. Now, what's going on is that for now, 
we have Trump, right? But let me tell you something, okay, as this next presidential race comes out, this is the only guy that's uh, holding a lot of things, uh, holding a lot of things back. But if this guy is gone, what do you think is going to happen then? You just, if you get a liberal president, then what? What do you think he's going to do? He's going to support this rebel rousing going on, and the state can't do much about it. That's pretty scary. We're heading toward more dangerous times over here. So let's talk about some of the things where they mention about defunding the police, right? So that's the goal. And then when they defund the police, it becomes actually even more dangerous. So here's one article from USA Today by Ryan W. Miller. The article title is, What Does Defund the Police Mean? And Why Some Say Reform Is Not Enough. D.C. Police Chief Peter Newsham warned that underfunding a police department, this is D.C., D.C., all right, the capital, Underfunding a police department could cause an increase in excess force by police officers. Now, isn't that interesting? I thought it would do the opposite, right? Why? Because he says this, quote, The number one thing that contributes to, the, to excessive force in any police agency is when you underfund it. If you underfund a police agency, it impacts training, it impacts hiring, it impacts your ability to develop good leaders. Here's another one. The Los, Angeles Police Protect, uh, the Los Angeles Police Protective League, the city's police union, they mention over here, cutting the LAPD budget means longer responses to 911 emergency calls. Officers calling for backup won't get it. And rape, murder, and assault, assault investigations won't occur or will take forever to initiate, let alone complete the unions board said in a statement last week. They also said over here, propo uh, let's see, proponents of the movement, now this is, uh, this is what I find to be hilarious, okay? The proponents of that a movement say the reallocated funding to address other social needs would actually reduce crime. It would reduce crime. This is what they said. I, I cannot comprehend this. Now, some of you who had, uh, if some of you know of friends and family members who went through these kind of psychological programs or these to meet their needs, you ever seen them try to laugh off or trick, trick the therapist or the psychologist? All the time. Yeah, so then, I mean, so we can trust these, uh, social, these uh, social needs or concerns. If we focus on these programs, it will definitely change these criminals. No, I went to... Uh, Chowchilla, okay, the largest uh, women's prison, and they, the guy who was uh, touring and showing to us, he mentioned that therapists are needed, but he also mentioned this. He also mentioned, I mean, he's been there for years, people. He says, look, no matter how much therapy you give them, there's a line that they don't cross, and you just give up on them. Wow. Like, if, uh, then uh, you're just wasting time on them. You got to work on the, the inmates there who at least have that chance to change. But people who don't, you don't want to waste time with that. They'll just laugh you off. He gave up on them. Why? Because he, he, he was a counselor. He's a counselor there. Okay, look at this. Laughable. This is what they claim. Quote, by shifting money away from the police and towards services that actually meet those needs, we'll be able to get to a place where people won't need to rob banks. Now that's scary, man. I mean, how, how, how insane is our world? This is, this is insanity over here. I mean, uh, come on, man. Even people who has connections and friends and family members in criminal activity, dry activity, they'll laugh at you. Amen. They'll laugh at you. They know that, hey, that, uh, no, okay? I mean, they tricked psychologists and therapists before. Putting on the sad act, right? They're not going to go to court, you know, uh, acting all defiant, they're going to put that sad act, you know, that innocent act, trying to, not, uh, I'm not really that guilty. They're going to do what it takes where they can get away with things. Anyways, let me uh, read some other articles over here. This is by the City Journal, the City Journal. The title of the article is Anarchy in Seattle. S Seattle's hard left uh, sessious, uh, excuse me, Let's keep reading over here. Six blocks in the Capitol Hill neighborhood. 
So they cover that much. Black Lives Matter and Antifa-affiliated activists have engaged in a pitched battle with Seattle police officers and National Guard soldiers in the neighborhood. Hoping to break through the barricade, protesters attacked officers with bricks, bottles, rocks, and improvised explosive devices. Then in a stunning turn of events, the city of Seattle made the decision to abandon the East Precinct and surrender the neighborhood to the protesters. <laughs> they said over here, even putting up a cardboard sign at the barricades declaring, you are now leaving the USA. They hooded men spray painted the police station with slogans and anarchist symbols, renaming it the Seattle People's Department East Precinct. Raz Simone, a local rapper, with an AK-47 slung from his shoulder and a pistol attached to his hip, screamed, this is war, into a white and red megaphone and instructed armed paramilitaries to guard the barricades and shifts. Later in the night, Simone was filmed allegedly assaulting multiple protesters who disobeyed his orders, informing them that he was the police now, sparking fears that he was becoming the de facto warlord of the autonomous zone. Let's see over here. Mm. We need to align ourselves with the global struggle that acknowledges that the United States plays a role in racialized capitalism, one told the protesters. Racialized capitalism is built upon patriarchy, white supremacy, and classism. The following day, a coalition of black activists associated with the autonomous zone released a more specific list of demands including, look at this, the ridiculousness, including the total abolition of the Seattle Police Department. The re, look at the, this is ridiculous, their list here, okay? Total abolition of the Seattle Police Department, the retrial of all racial minorities serving prison time for violent crimes, and the replacement of the police with autonomous Restorative, transformative, accountability programs. Blah! You know what they're going to do? They're going to play tricks with them. Laugh them off. Like they've always done. Activists pledge to maintain control of the Capitol Hill Autonomous Zone until their demands are met. Uh, one Seattle police officer with knowledge of internal deliberations, the city's leadership in chaos, and he said this, quote-unquote, the mayor has made the decision, this is so true, to let a mob of 1,000 people dictate public safety, see this? Dictate public safety policy for a city of 750,000. See what they're trying to do? See, just this group right over here dictates everything for these guys to do things, right? The tide of public opinion is on the side of the activists and they're pushing the envelope as far as they can, said the officer. It's not hyperbolic to say the end game is anarchy. That's what he says. That's what he says. Socialist Alternative Councilwoman Shama Sawant declared the takeover a victory against the militarized police force of the political establishment and the capitalist state. Three council members have signaled support for a 50% reduction in the police budget. With additional council members likely to support a similar policy in the coming weeks. Sawan also opened Seattle City Hall, which had been closed by the mayor, to protesters who immediately occupied the building. So we notice over here that we are, I mean, think about this, is that if you think this is chaos and this is bad, actually there were Trump supporters who got fed up with everything that's going on. So they're like, we're getting fed up about this. So they actually uh, took their weapons and some of them, you can find video clips somewhere where they all took, uh, they all went to Seattle. So there's gonna be some kind of bloody violence there. Ohio, there was already violence struck uh, going on over there. So. Look at this over here. It's like every man for himself. Yeah. It's every man for himself. There is violence everywhere. And think about this. So then if 
these guys have the domination to do whatever they want. I mean, they're going to do the same things eventually with Christians. And you might say, I don't think so. Well, actually, this video has been going around online. But there was a street preacher who was actually uh, attacked, uh, and he was actually uh, given a chokehold by Antifa and these liberals during this chaos that was going on. Now, whether the street preacher, so let me just clarify something over here. So maybe the street preacher, you might say, well, he was dumb enough to preach over there. He shouldn't have. Or maybe he was not delivering the gospel like he should have and was just uh, asking for it, you might argue. Okay, uh, whatever. But the point is this. The point doesn't, it doesn't change the fact that if you were to give liberty and freedom to these people, to a person who would mention about sin or hell, I mean, this is dangerous. They would do that to you. It doesn't change that fact. It doesn't change that fact no matter what. All right, so this is what uh, one Twitter reads over here, what they did. I mean, this is just awful. This is just disgusting what they did. But one person posted the video of the street preacher, and then he mentioned this. He says that this is what defund the police looks like. In Chaz, a street preacher is surrounded by Antifa. A professing homosexual man holds on to him, kisses him, unwarranted. They eventually released him. There are no cops, but, oh man, look at that. Jesus, give me no. strength for the back. What does it feel like to get hugged by a homosexual? <laughs> Glory to the king. I'll kiss you on the face, buddy. Glory to the king eternal. Oh, my God. Jesus is my thank you. He's He's in my phone. Don't choke we came here to express our religious views about the Lord Jesus Christ. We came into the Capitol Hill Autonomous Zone. Um, we have our banners, we have our speakers. Um, immediately, we started being harassed by people telling us that we could not be there and that we had to leave. Um, my phone was stolen several times and then returned and then finally ultimately stolen um they put me in chokeholds several times it's on video they they choked me i told them to let go then they let go they dragged me several times they tried to prevent me from getting to the crowd and, and giving our message they ripped the signs out of our hand um, they need me in the head but you know what god sent us here to give them that message of hope not a message of condemnation hope and they didn't want to hear it. Think about it. Isn't that the, how do you get the world to persecute Christians in the Antichrist kingdom? Unless you have something like this as a starting point, right? Yes. You give this one a starting point where they can have freedom to do what they want and they demand the government to meet their particular needs and to what? Get rid of protection. That's get rid of the police where, because why? Because our last stand, to be quite honest, Christians, the only reason why we have protection is because the last stand is actually the police officers. I mean, we, all you have to do is, con uh, I mean, if we have trouble in our church, who do we contact? Yeah. We contact the police, all right? We did that before, all right? That's the only way that we can survive. But if you don't have that, then what's going to happen? Anything goes. Anything goes. And as the world gets more crazy and crazy, think about this. Let's just uh, set up further more things. There's a Netflix cartoon, uh, and it's, uh, they had it what they call Smart Mark, they called it. And in this kid's program, uh, it was Stretch Armstrong and the Flex Fighters. And in this one, what they show to little children, what they show to little children, so let's see how everything's going to connect to this one, right? So here's the one screaming the demands. And then all these predictive programming is going on. One is where you have this system. If you watch that television show, kids are watching where people, when they do shopping or order stuff through the markets, they sit down on a chair and then they put this kind of technological uh, mark on their hand. They're playing that for children, actually. Uh, you can look that up. I gave, uh, so it's actually 
Uh, you have to look at the Netflix show, Stretch Armstrong and the Flex Fighters, and just look up Smart Mark. All right, Smart Mark. And then check that out and see if what I say is true or not. All right. Uh, another thing over here is that, well, you know, the only thing, to be quite honest, that's spreading truth is the churches, but churches are being shut down more and more, right? Due to the safety measures of coronavirus, so that's not helping. So everyone is going to online, right? But guess what? Even online is not even going to spread the truth either. You know why? A lot of you, how many of you have heard of Zero Hedge? Zero Hedge? I read articles over there. I mean, the guy's got some intelligent stuff. It's some neat stuff. I don't agree with everything. Yeah, there might be some odd oddities over there, but unless you read and research yourself, you can make your conclusion, right? But in Fox News by uh, Tucker Carlson, the title of the video is Prager U, Google YouTube censors conservative videos. So what they did was, uh, Google, what they did was that they start to put censoring measures on Zero Hedge and other sites. That's been trying to be whistleblowers. Talk about this uh, one world control that's going on. Okay, so that's not, this is not helping us then. So we lost protection here and the truth is can't spread over here. And obviously churches, you know, we just have to wait for that second wave, you know. Uh -huh. And then what are we gonna do? We, we can only spread the truth amongst each other and then we can't soul win and reach souls out there. So you get this one. Just wait for that second wave, folks. Just wait for that second wave, man. I really hope it doesn't happen. So we got to pray hard about that, that, where we can continue as a church. But man, I have a bad feeling that it will happen and that we, oh, we got to go lock down again. Now, Elon Musk, the title of the article is How to Land a Job at Elon Musk SpaceX According to the Rocket Company Software Team by Taylor Locke. That's by CNBC. And, you know, Elon Musk it says over here what he launched. We are here to answer any questions you might have about Dragon Software and working at SpaceX, the team wrote on Reddit. Now, for some of you that don't know what's going on, they were launching out satellites and stuff out in outer space by Elon Musk. And one of the names that they attributed it was Dragon, actually. So now you got the Dragon involved. And if you get the Dragon involved over here, it can uh, look down upon you and keep track wherever people are going. But will that happen at the Tribulation, Revelation 12? Interestingly, they called the name dragon, right? What did the Bible says in Revelation 12? The dragon, he'll be up there in outer space. He's going to be out there. Revelation chapter 12, verse 3. And there appeared another wonder in where? Heaven. And behold, a great red what? Dragon. Look what at verse 4. And his tail drew the what? Third part of the stars of heaven. And did cast them to where? Whoa, to the earth. Look at that. So he's up in outer space and he can have that transmission, that connection to reach down to earth to do his bidding. So up from space to earth. Okay, so then, I mean, we, we know about how satellites are keeping track of everything that's going on outside. So then let's say that you got no protection here. If that's not enough, you hardly get protected. There's nowhere to even hide them. If you get stuff like this launched out and they have power and access to this, they can keep track of you. Wow, we're in scary times. And then to top everything off, these churches, and there is no doubt about this, you notice they're being more and more Catholic sympathetic. You notice that? Yeah. So they don't really show what's wrong with the Catholic Church. They try to, you notice the churches, they'll go like this because they, don't, they want to please both sides. But they're not going to plainly say what's wrong with the Catholic Church, sadly. Now, these churches over here, and if you doubt me, look up the modern version committees, look up all the churches, look up the National Council of Churches, and you will see a Catholic priest somewhere involved. Or, uh, Trinity Broadcasting Network uh, used to be a famous Christian television station. They had priests on it. They had priests on it. 
Benny Hinn, he would uh, bash the Orthodox Church, but why he was doing that was because he was trying to support the Catholic Church. And he had priests on there too. So guess what? It's, if you're going to talk about Christianity, what do you think is the number one religion people think about when you talk about Christianity, huh? It's the Catholic Church, right? It's the Catholic Church. When you talk about Christianity, this is the first thing that they think about, is the Catholic Church. Well, Trump is defending religious freedom, so that's our only hope. Well, this is by The Hill. This is by The Hill newspaper, and it says this, June 2nd, 2020, so this is a while ago. Trump signs order directing State Department USAID to take action on global religious freedom. That's the title of the article. Well, praise the Lord Jesus Christ. He's doing a good job. Well, s some of you don't know this, but in the video, okay, if you actually look at uh, Bloomberg uh, Television, they have a video where Trump visits. It, the title of this video is Trump Visits the St. Uh, John Paul II National Shrine. St. John Paul II National Shrine in Washington, D.C. That's when... He made an, uh, he quietly, the newspaper mentioned it was quietly an executive order concerning about religious worship, but that was under what? It was all under Catholic. So guess what? Revelation 17 and 18, will there be uh, religious worship? Of course. And you know what that is? Revelation 17, 18, the Catholic Church. The Catholic Church. So then there's no, so, there's no turning back. Now look what, our, uh, look what our great president did in front of the statue. What did Revelation 13 says about the image of the beast? They're going to be worshiping it. The image of the beast at Revelation chapter 13. That's what it shows. Now look at Zechariah chapter 12. No, Zechariah 14, excuse me. Zechariah chapter 14. Zechariah chapter 14. So what's going to happen then? There's nothing left except to fight it out if you want some sort of protection. Is got, you got nothing but yourself to fight it out. And at the tribulation, that's what you have, actually. That's what you have. It's self-defense. Look at Zechariah chapter 14. Notice what will happen to this, uh, to this group of people because the whole world is turning against them. Verse 2, For I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle, and the city shall be taken, and the houses rifled, and the women ravished, and half of the city shall go forth into captivity, and the residue of the people shall not be cut off from the city. That's not hard to believe. I mean, we're getting, we're getting things where we're conditioning the people for that, see? We're setting up the people for that. And then look at verse 14, uh, verse, 13, and it shall, verse 13, and it shall come to pass in that day that a great tumult from the Lord shall be among them, and they shall lay hold every one on the hand of his neighbor, and his hand shall rise up against the hand of his neighbor, and Judah also shall fight at Jerusalem. And the wealth of all the heathen round about shall be gathered together, gold and silver and apparel in great abundance." And so shall be the plague of the horse, of the mule, of the camel, and of the ass, and of all the beasts that shall be in these tents as this plague. So notice over here that uh, Jerusalem, they're, uh, they're arming themselves to battle. They have to fight it out. And the Lord's going to have to be with them that time. Now, look at uh, Zechariah chapter 12. Zechariah chapter 12. And we'll look at verse 5. Verse 5. And the governors of Judah shall say in their heart, The inhabitants of Jerusalem shall be my strength in the Lord of hosts their God. 
In that day will I make the governors of Judah like an hearth of fire among the wood. Now notice it says governors. Did you read that? It shows as if it's like state power over here. You notice that? In that day will I uh, make the governors of Judah, uh, let's see over here, uh, verse 7, the Lord also shall save the tents of Judah first, that the glory of the house of David and the glory of the inhabitants of Jerusalem do not magnify themselves against Judah. In the day shall the Lord defend the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and he that is feeble among them at that day shall be as David. So notice over, uh, why? Because, verse 9, all the nations are attacking this city. So notice over here that uh, city and state, this local power, is going to be very, very an important play during the tribulation. And individuals have to arm themselves. Now here's something very interesting. Didn't you know that at the book of Luke, when Jesus sent out the disciples to do soul winning, you know what he told them? He told them to arm themselves. Self-defense weapons. Why would he say that? Because he knows that danger can befall on them. This is church age doctrine. Tribulation, they're really going to fight it out. But in the church age, I mean, it doesn't happen. It doesn't have to happen today. Throughout all time periods, the past 2,000 years of church history, the uh, Christians or believers, when they were witnessing the gospel, they had to arm themselves. That's why United States of America during the early times, a lot of them were, say, believers, and they believed the right to bear arms. Why? Because they had to do self-defense, especially when they were giving the gospel to other people. But we might be hitting that time, according to the book of Luke, where Christians might have to arm themselves when we go witness the gospel. And man, I pray that we won't get to something ugly like that and that there would be bloodshed. But man, we're getting to a point where, look, if, I'm at, if, I, if I was that preacher and I'm in a community where, you know, they have freedom to do what they want to me. And look, you be honest too, okay? Don't, don't think that, oh, this is too much. Look, if you were in that city and you're a Christian, you're walking outside, you see all this chaos, don't tell me that you, uh, you are not going to panic and you're not going to fear and you're not going to at least provide some form of protection in some way for yourself.